Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and if you're new here, make sure to give me a like, a subscribe. Today, we're going to continue working on this Gantt chart, and we're going to overlay or integrate Power Apps on top of it. Let's get into it. Last week, we created this Gantt chart. There's a couple things I want to change. First off, I don't really like this gray green, so I'm gonna actually change it. So I'm gonna to go to change the look theme. I'm gonna change it to this white, dark, dark blue-ish. It's almost like a dark blue black. I kind of like this color and matches the blue. Now, last week I actually created a power app, but I'm going to create a new one. And so this is good actually for the start of things. So I actually created a power app. I'm gonna create a better one. So here's the power app that I created yes, uh, last week. But I wanna start over. And so a good way to start over is to come to the gear icon, list settings, and in form settings, you can see your power app in here. So you can see right here, use a custom form created in power apps. Requires the new list experience. So actually, I can actually go back, just in case you make a mistake or something goes wrong, I can go back to the default form. I don't have to use my custom Power App form when I create one. So if you're ever worried about that, now we're back to our custom out of the box form. And then if you go back into list settings, so a lot of people are worried about creating Power Apps, right? They don't know how to revert back. They're like, oh, if I create this, how do I go back? You can just delete your old custom form. So you delete your old Power App and then it's gone. So no more Power App. Now we're gonna create a new one today. So we're gonna go back to Halloween project and to create a Power App for this SharePoint list, what you do is you come up here to integrate, you go to Power Apps and you do customize forms. So we're gonna integrate a custom form and it's going to replace our out of the box form here in SharePoint. So integrate Power Apps, customize forms and it's gonna load up Power Apps for us. Now, some technical details about this. When you create a Power App form, by default, it creates it in the default environment. So you can see right here, by default, a custom integrated form in Power Apps is created in the default environment. Unless your Power Platform admin uh, changed that, all of your SharePoint integrated forms will be created in the default environment. Okay, so out of the box, it already gave us a beautiful form, right? So we have a nice, beautiful form. The first thing I wanna do is, to me, it's very thin. I know it would look good in mobile, but what I wanna do is I wanna come up here to settings and I'm gonna to go to display and I'm gonna change the orientation actually to landscape. I want it to be wider. I like it wider, so when I'm in SharePoint, we get a much wider form and I'm gonna click close. And you can see now I have a much wider form, more space in here, and this is what I like better. So there's a few changes that I wanna make and there's some things that drove me crazy on the SharePoint side of things. So when you come in here and you, let's say we edit in grid view, every project start has to be the same date. If I were to change one of these, to let's say in November and say the project start, it's not going to increase the size of my Gantt chart. So that's one thing that drove me crazy. So you can default this field if you want to, to a certain date, but I don't want the user to have to come in there and change the default of the project start date every time they open up a list like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that on the Power App side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Project Start, I'm gonna pull it up, and actually another thing I wanna do, let me zoom in a little bit here. I want to use some of this wider space that I have here. So in the SharePoint form, I'm gonna click on the SharePoint form. You can see columns here. I'm gonna increase that to two. So now I have two columns and everything fits in my nice form perfectly. I'm gonna have project start, project due at the top. So now we have project start, project due, and then we have task due, 
task start. I'm going to pull this one. No, we're going to pull task type up here. So I like that. Project start, project do, title, task type, task start, task do, progress. This will be a progress bar. We're going to change it to a progress bar. Um, you know, we'll make it the full thing. And assign to user. Task description is going to be full spacing. We're going to make it larger. We're going to increase the size here also. And in the mode, so let's move me for a second. So when we move me, and you can see down here, mode, we're going to change this to multi-line. So therefore, we have a lot of space to write when we uh, can't zoom in. But we have a lot more space there to write. Now, one thing that drives me crazy is the default of project start and project do. And I'm going to make an executive decision. And this may be something that you have to learn or, or some way that you want to work around this. And that is ID number one is our project start, our project do. So our first line in our chart, so right here, this line right here is going to be our, we're going to say this is our project title. And this is going to be the entire project, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to default project start. So right here we have default date. I'm going to default this to let's see, look up. I'm going to look up my project, my list, right? So we have my Halloween project list. I'm going to look that up. And I'm going to say when ID is equal to one, then this is the project start. So by default, it's always going to pull in ID number one. Now this has one downside. If you do delete ID number one, this will cause problems. So maybe if you want this perfect, maybe you want to find, you know, another way to do this, but I'm going to say, look, ID number one, that's our project. That's our number one project. You should probably never delete ID number one. So I'm going to take the same thing on project do. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to say this is equal to project do. Okay, so we have project start, project do. We have title. I'm going to rename this to task title, task title. I want this to actually be task title. Okay, and then we have task type. And I'm going to add a new field up here. So up here, and this may be a place where you want to add instructions. Maybe you want to do other things. I'm going to pull the form down just a little bit here. And I'm going to insert another, let's say, text input in the top up here. We'll pull it over a little bit. Maybe we'll make it the whole width. And I'm going to insert a label, right? A label. And this is going to be project title. Now you have to work with me. This is just some executive decisions that I'm making. Maybe you want different decisions than what I'm making. I'm going to delete the text input here. And for the hint text, uh, this will be the I, uh, title of ID one. So this will be the title of ID one and maybe we'll move this over a little bit. Okay, and maybe I'll put title in square brackets. So I'm just coming up with ideas. If you don't like my ideas, you know, do it yourself, but I'm showing you how you can do this stuff. All right, so we have a nice new title. We have project start project do. Those look good. They're defaulted now. All right, we have task title, task type. So in project management, when you choose a milestone, that means that the task has no duration. So there should, so there should not be a task start and a task do. On a milestone, there should only be a task do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for task start, I'm going to change 
the default date. What I'm going to do is for default date, if, if, let's see, what, what is this card here? This card is data card value seven. If data card value seven dot selected dot value equals milestone then this is going to be equal to task due, which is data card value five. So then task start is going to be equal to data card value five dot selected date. Else it's equal to the parent dot default date. Okay, so if we're on milestone and you choose a date, then task start ends up being equal to that. But I don't want the user to have to think about this, right? So what I'm gonna do is on the visibility of task start, if data card value seven dot selected dot value equals milestone, then I want it to be not, not visible, so false, else it's true. So now if it's equal to milestone, you don't even see task start, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this task start, I'm gonna make this wider, and I'm gonna make task do wider. So just so we don't see that difference. So now when I select milestone, task start disappears, and you only have task do, but still in the back end, just because it's visible, doesn't mean it's not gonna write. It's gonna write whatever we put in task do. So that way it's not blank. So that's why we did that. Okay, um, progress. For progress, I wanna convert this into a progress bar. So insert a slider. Oh, we gotta unlock and add. So we're gonna insert a slider. All right, and this slider is gonna take the position of our number field here. So our data card value six. I'm gonna actually delete it, and it's gonna leave us with some red X's, but that's okay, that's fine. The first red X is saying, hey, we can't figure out where Y is anymore. You deleted data card value six, so this will be slider one. And this will also be slider one, okay? So we've reassigned where the error message is. It couldn't, it didn't know where it was gonna go anymore anymore. So now it does. So now the update property. So we're not gonna do value of data card value six. We're gonna do the value of slider one dot value. But there's a trick here. The slider is going up to 100. So instead of making the slider go from zero to one and, and trying to do decimals, like that, that, that is something you can do. It's a little more difficult, I thought, to do this, and I'm gonna increase this all the way up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the progress data card one, and on the update property, I'm just gonna say, hey, it's the value divided by 100. To me, that's the easy way to do that. I'm gonna say, hey, whatever the value is you select here, so if you select 80, divide that by 100, and you have 0.8, so when you update progress on the progress data card, when you update it, just divide by 100, and that'll give us a perfect decimal that we're looking for. I'll inc increase assign to user, make it bigger. So we're, we're already looking pretty good. One thing that I need to do is I need the default. So the default will be lookup Halloween project title, no, where ID equals one, title. So this will always be project title, get ready for Halloween. So this is always going to be ID number one. This is always going to be ID number one. And we kind of maybe want to make the text look the same. So maybe I'll change this to like a bold. So if we bold this, or is it semi bold? That looks better. I want project title to be view only. I don't want people to actually write there. I just want this to be a view only, and I'm gonna make it bold also or semi-bold. 
And maybe we'll make this bigger. Maybe we'll make this uh, a size 15 and kind of fit it in there. Maybe we'll center it. We'll center it along there. So we have the project title in there. We have task title because that's our first task. I think I'll leave it as task title. Maybe we'll go back to title. I'm going to make some more decisions. I'm going to just remove project title. I'll just put the project title at the top. Maybe you want to put some instructions up here. Maybe you can think about that. I'll just leave that blank for now. But actually, if it's blank, it'll just be blank. I think that'll be fine. So I'm going to remove the project title, leave that up here. And then we need to work on the default of progress. It's set up as 50. So we want parent dot default actually. So we want to make sure we have parent dot default on the progress bar. Ah, and I noticed one thing parent dot default. It's actually that didn't work, right? Because it's a decimal. It's a value of parent dot default times 100. Ah, that's it. So we need that save publish. I believe it's parent dot default times 100 publish. All right. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's check out our Power App. So I click on Add a New Item. We can see we have our title up here. That looks beautiful. Project Start, Project Do. That looks good. Title, so this is where our task title comes in. So if we want to write a new task like Set Up Decorations, we can do that. We can say it's a task. Uh, the Task Start will be on the 20th, and the Task Do will be on the 25th. Um, progress, we'll put it somewhere in the middle here. We'll put it at 23. Assign to user, Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil, please set up those decorations. Okay, and then we'll hit save. So we'll hit save. We can see that set it up right there, 23%. I like how it showed up, like just a little bit of the progress bar. That looks beautiful. I think everything is looking good. So we have a nice... Let's, let's try one thing. I want to add a task in the middle here. I want to, you know, the sort order should work because we set that up before. So let's um, um, maybe eat candy. How about that? Eat candy. It's a milestone. It only takes us a second. Uh, we'll put it in here on the seventh. We eat candy. It's 100% done. Assigned to me. Yum. Save. Boom, there we go, it added it into the middle of our Gantt chart. I really think this is looking beautiful. I think for next week, I'm gonna give a little bit of extra. We're gonna edit the JSON just a little bit. And I just want to everyone to give, uh, I looked up how to say his name. His name is Hindaj. So, so everyone give thanks to Hirt. I said it right this time. I believe that's how you say his name. Everyone give thanks to Hirt. He's the one who put this JSON together. Next week, we're going to edit that JSON. I think what we want to do is when a task is late, I want to change it to red. Uh, and then maybe we'll try and change the some a couple other things. And that'll be the cherry on top for next week's video. We'll change the JSON a little bit. Maybe we'll try and add a column. Let's see if we can add a column and add it to our little drop down here. Let's see, maybe we'll have estimated cost or actual cost. Let's see if we can add it to this little card here. I like, we have this pencil tool. Oh, I never noticed that pencil tool. Oh, that opens up the form. Okay, so we'll see if we can edit this little card here so everyone can do it. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess and I'll see you next week.